In this session, we are going for a comparative analysis of Gandhara art, Mathura art, and Amravati art forms of sculpture. The first basic information that we can have here is that all the three art forms developed in postmodern age. Again, the Gandhara art was mainly patronized by the Kushanas. The Mathura art form was also patronized by the Kushanas. And Amravati art form was mainly patronized by the Satvahanas. Now, it is very interesting to figure out that the Kushanas, they almost created an international empire in post-Mauryan time, starting from the northern parts of India and going up to parts of Central Asia, it was almost an international empire. The Kushanas got two capitals. One was Purushpur, that is present-day Peshawar, in northwest part of Indian subcontinent. And there they patronized this Gandhara art form. On the other hand, the second capital of the Kushanas, it was at Mathura. And there they patronized the Mathura art or the Mathura style of sculpture. Then, Interestingly, Satvahanas were the first power from south to create an empire. They patronized this Amravati art form. Again, a very important information that we can derive through the nomenclature is that the Gandhara art developed in Gandhara area. So, where was exactly this Gandhara area? In ancient times, this Gandhara area covered parts of Pakistan and Afghanistan. So, mainly, it was in northwest part of Indian subcontinent. Certainly, the Mathura art form. By nomenclature, we can ascertain that it developed in the areas around Mathura. Amravati art form mainly developed in the river basins of Krishna and Godavari. And Godavari. Again, a very important information that we can have here is that. When you talk about this Gandhara art, it is so special because it is truly a fusion art. Why it should be considered fusion art? Because the images of Buddha, they were mainly represented in Greco-Roman styles. Basically, this art form started developing when the Indo-Greeks started settling in northwest part of India. So, they started representing Buddha in Greco-Roman style. Now, when you see this image of Buddha in Gandhara style, you can figure out the Greco-Roman influence is very visible. Figure out the moustache of Buddha. Then the Urna or the third eye is clearly visible. Then the clothes of Buddha, they are shown like the Roman toga in the layered forms. Then the hair of Buddha is shown in a wavy like pattern that is all the greco roman influence so in gandhara art that was almost a fusion art the greco roman style was used to represent buddha the mathura art on the other hand is very much indigenous in its origin so indian style of sculpture it is in which the buddhist images are shown again extra information that we can have that in Mathura art compared to Gandhara and Amravati art forms, which are mainly Buddhist in their theme, the Mathura art form represents the images from Buddhism, Jainism and Hinduism, all the three major religious ideas. Then, if you talk about the Amravati art form, again, it is indigenous in its origin and here, Mainly, again, the themes are Buddhist in nature. Again, it is very interesting to find out that among the three art forms, there is a big difference among the material that would be used to represent the sculptures. If you talk about the Gandhara art, it mainly used the stones like slate and the cysts. And if this is so, the images of Buddha are slightly grayish or bluish in color. Compared to that, the Mathura art form mainly used the red sandstones, sandstones, and that is why the images are slightly reddish in color. 
compared to that amravati art form is very special because it would use white marble and that is why the representation again is very different and is very delicate again it's very interesting to figure out here that when we talk about the gandhara art form buddha is shown in meditative in a state of meditation and in a very spiritual way buddha would be represented but try to compare that with mathura art buddha is looking delighted buddha is looking delighted so a major difference between gandhara art form and mathura art form that buddha is shown very spiritual in gandhara art form and in mathura art form buddha is shown delighted then if you talk about the amravati art basically it is a narrative art basically it is a narrative art what is narrative art basically the stone panel or the marble panel they are used to represent the entire story or any episode of life of buddha so when you see this marble panel you can figure out the story connected with life of buddha is represented so amravati art is narrative art so yaad rakhenge in gandhara art buddha is shown in a spiritual way in mathura art buddha is shown delighted in amravati art basically the story of buddha is represented so it is narrative art now after this discussion apart from you can solve so many objective questions you can solve four subjective questions as well first what is the difference between gandhara art and the mathura art second what is the difference between mathura art and amravati art third question what is the difference between gandhara art and amravati art and fourth question how will you compare the gandhara art mathura art and the amravati art ab jaate jaate man ki baat mein if we compare the gandhara art and mathura art again where buddha is very spiritual in gandhara style and buddha is very delighted in mathura style there is a marked difference between the idea of wisdom and knowledge in west and east in west it is said that ignorance is bliss in east in india what we say vivekanand vivek is anand knowledge is bliss that is why is it not very natural that the mathura buddha is looking very delighted inspired by the indigenous or the local tradition 